Hey everyone, my name is Chi. Uh, today I want to introduce you about this uh, optimization question about how to optimize agentic systems. Uh, I'm the founder of the Autogen project and recently we renamed that to, uh, into a new uh, chapter called AG2. And I uh, also joined Google DeepMind recently. Pri previously I worked at Microsoft Research. So um, I want to uh, uh, first introduce a little bit about our like, motivation when we built the Autogen framework. It's an open source programming framework for, for agents. Uh, so earlier uh, in like 2002, uh, when we saw the power of like GPT models uh, and we, we, we started wondering uh, in this new generative AI era, uh, besides generating high quality content like text and image, where, where are these future applications going? What's the trend? And how do we maximize these powerful models to uh, make them execute interestingly complex tasks for future? And uh, uh, around the year, around time when GPT-4 was released, we made uh, the technical bet that the agent will be the future. And uh, for, for multiple reasons, not only they can become the natural interface uh, for humans to interact with the digital world, but also they, that will enable the uh, AI to have a stronger capability than just using a simple model. And uh, the other third reason that uh, not many people are talking about, that is uh, the agentic programming can be a new like a software architecture to enable us to build software in a completely different way. And uh, uh, we, we made that bet very early um, when m m many people still had the doubts about whether agent is a viable notion. Um, and, uh, but, but we believe that's the future and it will take time for people to realize it. What we didn't expect is it took a much shorter time than, than we uh, uh, planned. Uh, so uh, like starting from uh, later last year and this year, uh, we have seen a lot of interesting uh, work, uh, especially applications built by developers in all different domains. And here's one example uh, built by Emergence AI, a startup company based in here. Uh, and they build uh, this web automation agents that can help users uh, automate the tasks like book a flight ticket uh, or fill a, f a form automatically from my email and so on. Uh, they uh, build uh, Agent E using this autogen technique uh, which contains a team of uh, agents uh, in a hierarchical way. And uh, without using multimodal models, just using the text-based language models, uh, but uh, thanks to the power of this uh, hierarchical planning and decomposing the task into smaller pieces, the agent has a very nice accuracy in understanding the HTML content and achieve the best performance on this Web Voyager benchmark. Uh, and uh, they have a lot of interesting lessons learned from, from building, building such a, a web agent application. And if you look at the performance numbers, uh, it's roughly about 70% uh, overall on the different tasks. So there's still a large room for improvement. Uh, obviously, one uh, way to improve it is to introduce multimodal models to read the text. Uh, but there are, uh, in general, uh, a big question for many developers is, how do we uh, really optimize agents to meet the, my success criteria for uh, production use case? And, uh, and that's the topic I want to discuss today. Uh, so in terms of optimization, uh, there are many different uh, metrics that we, we want to optimize for. Uh, first uh, and foremost important is really the quality. So we first want the agent to be able to meet a uh, high quality bar before we worry about uh, other factors. And, and then you may want to optimize for uh, the cost, latency, and even the manual effort of doing such optimization. And uh, how do we optimize for these metrics? There are also a lot of optimization choices when building such uh, applications. Uh, there are like the models to use, like we, we need to choose which model, which version of the model, and which, from which model provider to use, what's the prompt to use. And uh, there are many other configurations, such as the tools, uh, or the human input, uh, how do we combine these models, tools, and uh, human in the loop, and orchestrate all of them to perform effectively. Um, so in general, uh, to answer these kind of questions, uh, we need to basically have uh, two basic questions to answer. So the first, one, uh, first question is, uh, how do we uh, represent this large design space, uh, space uh, and uh, make uh, developers to quickly navigate along, along them and find the optimal point inside that. And the second question is, how can we automate, uh, automate that process? 
So this is a similar lesson we learned previously from uh, the auto, auto ML work, the automated machine learning work. Uh, initially, people built uh, like standard machine learning framework like scikit-learn and um, uh, PyTorch uh, to enable us to quickly uh, try out different, uh, designs, uh, different design points in the very large design space. And then people started working on automatic technique to automate uh, these efforts. Uh, so uh, when we started building AutoGen, we have a similar journey. So uh, we have been working on this FLAMO, the AutoML open source library, starting from like about five years ago. So uh, when we start building AutoGen, we will also want to eventually get to the point where uh, we can just take a task from the user and uh, automatically present them with the optimal design of agent and agent systems. Uh, but before that, we first need to create this stand, uh, standard interface and standard framework to, uh, for developers to quickly build up all these agentic uh, systems in an easy way. Uh, so uh, after uh, some effort, we uh, published the research paper earlier in August, and then we quickly uh, got a big interest uh, in, in, uh, on, on GitHub and received multiple uh, awards. Uh, but mo what excites me most is uh, to see the, uh, how quickly the uh, community is uh, adopting this framework and start building all sorts of interesting applications uh, from both startup companies and large enterprise companies. Uh, the agent, uh, agent E is one example in the web, uh, web domain. There's, uh, there are other interesting use cases such as science discovery. Uh, we have found uh, uh, a, a, uh, multiple scientific use cases, for, for example, for protein design for material design and even proposing new scientific hypotheses for, a, for any arbitrary scientific domain using uh, ontology knowledge, uh, knowledge graphs. And uh, another example is in software development and data an analytics. So um, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, interesting use cases uh, for, from, for, for, from the committee. And then uh, to summarize these practices, uh, we offered a course on this uh, deep learning AI called uh, Agent AI Design Patterns using Autogen to talk about how we handle these uh, uh, different uh, important foundational design patterns. Um, but if we, if we uh, just to try to simplify this concept a little bit here, uh, the, the most essential concept in Autogen is quite simple. It asks the developers to think about arbitrary complex applications in, in two simple steps. The first step is to define the agents, and the second step is to get them to talk. So, um, so uh, this agent notion in Autogen unifies many different types of entities, including the language models, including the tools and the human inputs. An agent can uh, use uh, any of these uh, primitive capabilities to generate replies, send messages to other agents, and then receive requests from other agents and then uh, start performing actions. You can use a mixture of these backends as well. And uh, how do we get uh, from these relatively simple agents to more powerful agents that can perform more complex tasks? The answer is that we can uh, compose this uh, multi-agent chat in different ways, uh, in different conversation patterns. And, uh, and then uh, we can, for example, nest uh, multiple agent chat inside of one single agent and make that agent uh, be, uh, perform much more complex tasks and you can recursively build this up and uh, uh, tra tra transition from the multiple agent to single agent. Uh, the examples uh, of multiple agent conversations are like two simple two agent chat, a sequential chat that consists of a sequence of predefined chats, and uh, only the previous chats finish, the next chat will happen, and it will carry over from the previous chat the most essential information to the next chats. There's uh, also the group chat, which is more flexible. So like uh, we put uh, everyone in the same group and they can speak in different orders. Uh, and this order is dynamically decided by the group chat manager who performs this orchestration. And you can also add constraints to specify when to transit from one agent to another. And, and by using the building blocks, uh, you can easily uh, quickly and, uh, navigate the large design space. We have seen a lot of uh, uh, interesting uh, 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 creation and, uh, and interesting uh, innovative experimentation out of this using this basic building blocks. So now we're entering the next phase uh, of um, uh, more automatic techniques to optimize for these metrics uh, from, from different dimensions. Uh, if, uh, I've, here I list a few examples of uh, the agentic optimization techniques. They target for different metrics. 
The agent optimizer, for example, targets for the quality and in the same time try to reduce the manual effort for optimization. Uh, and the optimization choice it tries to optimize is the tools uh, that we can provide to the language model agents. This, uh, 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 so we can allow the developers to provide a set of tasks and the agent optimizer will automatically go through the tasks and try to suggest the tools uh, to the agent and try try them uh, and reflect on how effective they are at the end. And then we can iterate this to refine the tools or create new tools as we need. Uh, and the, uh, there are other examples like Captain Agent, who try to optimize for both Agent 2 and orchestration and reduce manual effort. I will uh, talk about that in the next few slides. Uh, and there are a few other examples try to optimize for cost and quality or latency. I think one um, uh, meta point I want to make here is that by unifying the different type of entities using its agent concept and by unifying the, uh, complex, uh, the complex application uh, combining all these different type of components using a simple multi-agent conversation paradigm, uh, it makes it much easier to reason, reason about these applications and also uh, makes it easy to perform optimization in a relatively simpler high-level interface. So this is similar to how we lift up the abstraction of programming from assembly language to pr functional programming to object-oriented programming, and then uh, now we have the chance to uh, embrace a brand new paradigm of agent-oriented programming. So I will dive into the capital agent uh, idea in the next few slides. And, and, and this is a, also a promising paradigm that we can eventually potentially integrate all the different alternative techniques into one single piece of system. So the idea is that we want to save the developers the manual effort of manually creating these multi-agent systems. Uh, so uh, we will try to provide a functionality called auto-build so that uh, based on the description, we can automatically generate this uh, right agent team to solve the task. And uh, primarily, there are two uh, different paradigms, uh, static build and uh, dynamic build. In the static build, we will take the task description and generate the agent team at once. And in future, we use this, all the same team again and again for uh, future tasks. The adaptive build is uh, more flexible. It uh, will uh, take the take task description, uh, try to decompose the task into multiple sub subtasks. Uh, and uh, for each subtask, it tries to create a different team uh, based on the requirement. Uh, so the, the team can be used for this particular step, and in the next step, we, will, we can replan uh, and, and to create a, a different team. So that has uh, uh, that's enabled, enabled us to uh, address uh, the different task requirements and uh, also uh, handle the more complex tasks to uh, divide and conquer them. So here's the one example of how Captain Agent works. Uh, it takes the initial problem requirement. Uh, the user, when user talks to this captain agent, it, uh, it has the impression that it's talking to only a single agent. But under the hood, the captain agent can uh, leverage uh, all, a library of uh, uh, multiple agents of different roles uh, and select them dynamically and create this message group chat for them to solve the task. And after each uh, conversation finishes, the captain agent will have a reflection on like what uh, was solved properly for this particular step and what is uh, still needed to improve. Uh, and then in the next step, it has a chance to fix the problem. And here's a uh, like, very concrete example about how to answer a question that needs to analyze the YouTube video uh, and understand content and answer the complex question. Um, and you can see that the agents, some of the agents will be able to generate code and other agents are able to execute code and there are other agents to review the process and so on. Uh, and uh, it achieves, achieves uh, quite a strong performance compared to all the previous uh, work with similar flavor. And also if you compare the static build and the uh, dynamic build, uh, there's a big jump in the performance in many different tasks like solving math problems, uh, programming tasks, uh, data analytics, and so on. So I hope that give you an idea about uh, some examples of the potential optimization tactics that we can potentially enable with this uh, uh, foundational uh, agent programming framework, and there are a lot more research we can do. Uh, for example, we can combine all the different techniques that optimize for different perspectives and offer a system that automatically, uh, according to the optimization metric, different metrics to suggest the uh, optimal design point, 
and, uh, uh, and the developers can uh, start from there to further refine them. Uh, I want to take a moment to acknowledge all the like, open source contributors. Now we have this open governance uh, new organization called AG2. We welcome everyone to join force and develop the future of AI agents together. Uh, thank you very much. Feel free to reach out on Discord and other platforms to, for, for questions. Uh, do I still have questions for, uh, do I still have time for questions? Yeah. Uh, okay, good. Uh, any, any questions? Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, thanks for the great presentation. Yeah. It's, uh, I have one question about uh, the, uh, yeah, uh, um, about the measurement of the performance. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so you, like in one of the papers you said like it was around 85%. So my question is about like the failure cases mm. and the failure ca cases can be simple. Like for example, if I uh, asked to book a flight, right, it might just fail to book, book a flight yeah. or it could be like book the wrong flight mm. or it could be did something very weird like like RM minus RF uh, uh, slash, right? Yeah. So, so how do you account for that in this uh, uh, evaluation framework? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that uh, using these uh, agents, we can potentially build uh, automatic evaluation systems that help you us better understand uh, how good my application is uh, and uh, go beyond the simple success rate. Because sometimes you can't tell the difference just by looking at the numbers if they are very close, but the two systems can, can potentially make very different kind of mistakes or failures. Uh, this, uh, we have some research recently called Agent Eval. Uh, that's uh, about uh, uh, creating several agents that automatically look at the execution logs and suggest uh, different success uh, criteria, different dimensions to consider for this application. Uh, exactly like what you mentioned, if the application is about flight booking, the agent can automatically suggest several different uh, sub-criteria to check and then automatically provide scores for this particular uh, wrong how good it is uh, at each dimension and for the next wrong how good it is so that it can give idea not about the overall um, numbers of our different techniques but also the area that need further improvement or the area that already doing well so that provide more insights and you can further include human in the loop to provide more guidance to the agents so that they can refine our criteria or, or scoring uh, part of it. Um, so this multi-agent uh, design can enable you have created the agents that uh, be responsible and focus on different uh, success criteria. And in some of the use cases uh, uh, we see from the community, they can generate a really nice uh, uh, report uh, all the way from a simple, simple question. It can generate a long and comprehensive report that are good at all the different criteria. And that's because they have a different uh, agent teams that each of them focus on different uh, uh, perspectives of, of them and eventually combine the result to, to generate a, a nice comprehensive rep uh, report. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more question, please. Yeah. Pass this one down. <laughs> Hello, thanks. Um, as as these like um, agent frameworks are keep evolving and evolving and growing, and there are so many iterations along the way, how do you mitigate um, the randomness it, in each iteration? And how do you would you suggest to like when the conversation starts and it's becoming like a, like a huge conversation, and we can manage that randomness it in it in, in each conversation, like in each uh, interaction? So uh, I think that generally there's a trade-off between uh, the controllability uh, and uh, the adaptability to address new use cases that we haven't thought about. You can define some very precisely controlled flows that, um, that reduce the randomness. But on the other hand, uh, they may be confined to uh, perform very limited functions and cannot uh, handle the new, new uh, situations. Uh, we, uh, in, in AG2, currently we offer different conversation patterns 
uh, that you can pick and uh, according to these needs. But in future, we plan to also add some automatic modes so that we can uh, probably potentially uh, suggest uh, uh, these different patterns automatically according to uh, the, the, the goal.